Hi guys, Alex Hoskins here with you again for the third and final part of our three-part video series detailing Storm's pin buffer layout system. Now this third and final video, all about the final measurement in the pin buffer layout system, the pin buffer itself. Now what is the pin buffer and what effects does it have on ball motion? Once again, just like with the previous videos, we will take a look at some graphics first to see what's happening on the inside of the ball and then later we'll see how that translates into some ball motion as we throw some bowling balls down the lane. All right guys, let's take a look at the table here. Now this time I have two different high road pearls featuring two different pin buffers. Now on the left here, we have a one inch pin buffer. On the right, we have a four inch pin buffer. Now just like with the other videos in the series, we have held the other two measurements constant from the pin buffer layout system. This means the pin to PAP distance is five inches on both of these balls, and the PSA to PAP distance is five inches as well on both of these balls. That's just so that we can see purely what the differences are in the pin buffer change when we throw these balls down the lane. Let's take a look at some graphics to see what's happening on the inside of the bowling ball, and then we'll throw these balls down the lane and see what kind of results we get. Here we have the inverted FE2 technology that is found inside the High Road Pearl. The pin buffer is going to control how quickly the ball transitions from skid to hook to roll as it travels down the lane. Changes in the pin buffer will affect whether the finger and thumb holes are drilled into the top of the weight block or the side of the weight block. Let's use our two example pin buffers so we can better understand how the pin buffer affects the weight block of the High Road Pearl. Let's take a look at our 5x5x1 high road pearl. We already know that pin to PAP distance is going to control the angle of the weight block. We also know that the PSA to PAP distance isn't changing the orientation of the weight block significantly on this ball because it is symmetrical. All we are concerned about is where the holes are penetrating the weight block. In the 5x5x1 high road pearl, you'll see the holes are positioned into the side of the weight block. Shorter pin buffers remove more mass from the side of the weight block. The more mass removed from the side, the more the differential increases because the width of the weight block is getting slightly smaller while the height is unaffected. Since the height is greater than the width, a smaller width makes the difference between the two even greater than it was before. More differential creates more flare and more shape front to back. Now let's take a look at the 5x5x4 high road pearl. You'll see this time the holes are positioned more into the top of the weight block. Longer pin buffers will remove more mass from the top of the weight block. The more mass removed from the top, the lower the differential becomes because the height of the weight block is getting slightly smaller while the width is unaffected. Since the height is greater than the width, a small height makes the difference between the two less than it originally was. Less differential creates less flare and less overall hook throughout the lane. We have put some contrasting markers on each of these bowling balls to help you see how the migration is occurring as we watch these balls go down the lane. The first marker was placed on the initial positive axis point. The second marker was placed exactly three and a half inches away from the initial positive axis point along the migration path. So we can see how quickly the migration passes over this point. Keep in mind, the second marker doesn't necessarily represent the final axis the ball achieves when it is rolling. We are just using these markers as a visual aid to help us see how unstable the ball is and how quickly it is migrating as it goes down the lane. The following videos compare the one inch high road pearl to the four inch high road pearl. The difference between these balls is huge as they go down the lane. Watching the balls in slow motion, you'll see the one inch high road pearl on the left migrates to the second colored marker nearly 20 feet sooner than the four inch high road pearl on the right. This is pretty remarkable considering the pin to PAP distance is the same on both bowling balls. This really shows you how influential the pin buffer is as these balls go down the lane. The one inch high road pearl on the left transitioned from skid to hook to roll fast enough to get back to the pocket and roll through the pins properly. Shorter pin buffers like the one inch high road pearl on the left 
will generally favor speed dominant players because the transition happens faster. This helps the ball get into a roll earlier since it doesn't have as much time on the lane before it hits the pins. The 4 inch high road pearl on the right transitioned from skid to hook to roll much slower and is almost still in the hook phase as it enters the pins. Longer pin buffers like the 4 inch high road pearl on the right will generally favor rev dominant players because it slows down the transition. This avoids the ball getting into a roll too early and not having enough energy down lane. Shorter buffers will generally be better on the fresh because they transition faster and get into a roll earlier, which blends out the oil pattern. Longer pin buffers are generally going to be better on the burn because they delay the loss of energy through the front part of the lane. Of course, there are always exceptions, but this is a general rule of thumb. All right, guys, that wraps up our third and final part of our three-part video series detailing Storm's pin buffer layout system. Now, I hope you learned a little something about the pin buffer itself, what effects it has on the inside of the bowling ball, and how that translates into ball motion as we threw some bowling balls down the lane. Be sure to check out the other two parts if you haven't already, detailing the other two measurements in Storm's pin buffer layout system. I want to thank you guys one final time for watching these three-part video series detailing Storm's pin buffer layout system. And as always, bowl up a storm.